you if you found yourself sitting at your desk at work and just staring at an OptiFit hosel for let's say two to three hours without blinking, you'll figure it out. Not just speaking from uh, from uh, what a friend has told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Fitting Room Podcast with your hosts Nate Adelman and AJ Volpel. Yo, everybody out there listening to The Fitting Room, thank you. First off, thank you very much for listening to this new, wonderful episode of The Fitting Room Podcast. I am AJ Volpel. I have Nate Adelman with me. He has two golf shafts that he's uh, tinkering with right now. This podcast will be in the video format so if you go to youtube or apple tv and roku and download uh and download callaway tv you could watch it there you can watch it right from your phone nate i mean if you have youtube on your on your phone you can just watch it instead of Mm. instead of listening Mm. but if you are listening and you're not subscribed make sure you're subscribed to the fitting room apple podcasts spotify soundcloud just search the fitting room part of the callaway podcast network Always a pleasure to be with you, Nate. Um, I see that you're. I'm not. I'm not quite sure what you're doing. You're you're flickering something at the end of those golf shafts mm. over there. Well, today's episode is. I wouldn't call it the uh, the one that maybe will drive the most number of listens. It's not as as sexy as like an Epic Flash launch or an Apex launch podcast. Certainly not as good as when we have Yodi Nevs on the mm, show, mm. but I will say that this episode is fixing to be one of the most useful episodes for yeah. not only tinkering with your own game easily, but also understanding the dynamics of the golf clubs in your hand and how you can get the most out of your clubs. And yeah, f- yeah, and I think it's easy for me and you who have been around these products for so long and have had so much experience with them, talking about them, using them, adjusting them, all of that. So we tend to get, I, I mean, I don't want to really throw us, I don't want to throw you under the bus or anything, but maybe sometimes we get a little jaded in terms of revisiting things that we might think is simple, but to a lot of people is maybe confusing or more difficult to solve. And I think this episode is about that because we want to make sure that if you have a Callaway golf club that comes with the OptiFit hosel, that you know how to use it to your advantage. And Nate, some people don't even know what the op, I bet you some people out there in Callaway land have a club with the OptiFit hosel. And if you ask them to point out what the OptiFit is, I bet you some wouldn't even be able to point it out. And the thing is that throughout the fitting process, when we're talking about fitting, controlling spin is pretty much everything. Controlling spin is going to help you hit it straighter. It's going to have better distance control. It's going to help you stop the golf ball on short shots. Um, It's going to give you optimal trajectory. It's, or it's a contributing factor to the trajectory off the tee. Of course, a lot of times we fit for ball speed, but you can get maximum ball speed and not maximize your distance. And it's by joining that with spin and there's no better way to affect spin than with loft and lie Yeah. and making sure that that your shot shape, your trajectory, your spin is dialed. And there's, and the, the, besides getting the fixed loft that's in, in the head that you select, whether it's irons or woods, the ability now to have adjustable drivers, um, it's all in The adjustable hosel Mm -hmm. is really where it's at. So we're going to go deep today into the OptiFit hosel. And we might, we can even touch on how the OptiFit hosel differs from adjustable hosels from other brands as well. And we can compare and contrast some of the pros and cons of of each of those options. But really it's about if you can control your spin, uh, especially, I mean, really on off every club, Mm -hmm. you're going to be, um, much better off for it. And the yeah. best way to adjust your spin on your woods is going to be through the OptiFit hosel. So Nate, OptiFit hosel versus glued in hosel. What are some of the pros and cons for each? 
Okay, so when you have a glued in hosel or a fixed hosel, um, there, is an, there is an advantage in that in that it saves weight, right? It's, it's lighter weight connection. So you can um, basically redistribute that weight elsewhere in the club. I don't know of any driver on the market now um, that's a tour level driver that does not have adjustability. Mm. Now, Fairway Woods, yes. Yeah. Drivers, uh, really all of them have adjustability now. But there might be a tour player that says, I want it glued in. and yeah. there'll be. But um, in the past, if you if you did have a glued in driver hosel and you wanted to make an adjustment, first off, you would have to have a neck on your driver that had bending room. Right. Which not all of them did. Um, like the old Callaway S2H2 hosel where the hosel goes straight into the club head. Like, yep. like that was on original big Bertha, great right. big Bertha, all that. You can't bend that. Yep. Um, uh, and so you would need that, but the equipment to accurately bend a glued in hosel for a wood or is very, very difficult. Most mm. golf shops don't have it. It's very difficult to do it right. It's easy to break the clubs because you can't clamp down a wood head because it's hollow and yeah. it'll, it'll cave in. Right. So you don't want to do that. I don't recommend bending wood, fixed hosel woods at your house by yourself unless you really know what you're doing. And, <laughs> and, hosel it, woods. and in order to know what you're doing, you had to have broken a lot of them yeah. to figure that out. So I don't recommend right. that. So mm -hmm. um, that so that's the disadvantage of a fixed hosel as well. The advantage of well, having the, the Rogue, remember the Rogue products? Yes. Uh, the Rogue Fairway Woods glued in. Glued in hosel, yeah. Yeah. And that, especially in a fairway wood where you want a really low center of gravity yeah. to be able to launch, launch the ball it. high, that's where sometimes the trade off of having adjustability is not worth it. Yeah. And it kind of depends on the golfer and what, you, what you'd like and what you, what, what you value. But um, for that line of clubs, which is all about launch yep. and speed. Let's re let's save some weight. Let's add some totally. launch. It makes sense. How much weight? How much weight uh, is saved? I think it's about uh, depending on the version that you have. Mm -hmm. There's um, we'll get into it, but there's a driver hosel and now there's a, a, a distinct new, fairway right, hosel. New fairway hosel. Um, I believe it's between like six and eight grams mm. of weight. So okay, it's it's that's a, that, I mean, that's a full swing weight yeah, point. Totally. Or that's a bunch of swing weight points actually yeah. at low in the club. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it it certainly makes a difference. All right, cool. Um, oh. Quick reminder, you guys, quick reminder, the fitting room live. If you like the podcast, make sure you tune in to Sirius XM PJ tour radio every single Monday from five to six Pacific, eight to nine Eastern me, Nate, a ton of phone calls. If you have any fitting questions or equipment questions, make sure you tune in to the fitting room live every single Monday night. I forgot that little tidbit, Nate. I had mm. to throw that in there. Uh, but, but Nate, there's, there's generally two types of hosels or adjustable hosels, uh, one access, two access. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So depending on the manufacturer that you have, mm -hmm. um, it depends on the type of adjustability that you have. So some, they adjust loft and lie together and others you can do it independently. So, um, so Callaway, a Callaway, is independent. the OptiFit hosel is you can adjust loft and lie separate from one another. Yeah. There's two separate cogs on the hosel. You can adjust, um, you can adjust one of the uh, cogs for loft, the other for lie, and you can have eight different combinations that are independent of each other and independent of the shaft, which is critical. We'll get into that. Um, the Callaway Optive hosel is actually the only one that is the loft and lie are done independent of the shaft itself. Um, the 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 hosel for um, the, uh, what do you say? The drivers that end in five or six. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? Sure. Am I allowed I, to say I, that? hundred percent. That is legal. Legal. Is that good? <laughs> yep. They said, they just gave you the okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> that is a single axis hosel, which means you can adjust loft and lie together, but not separate. Not so separate. you can go lower loft and open the club face, which mm -hmm. flattens it somewhat, or mm -hmm. you can go higher loft and close the club face, which will put it in the upright position. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but it's a single axis. It kind of goes open and down or closed and up and that's mm -hmm. it. Um, the, the OptiFit or the hosel, the adjustable hosel for, um, a driver that maybe has the letters T and S in it. Yeah. Is sure. that okay? Uh, Can I say that? Uh, lawyers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Good. good. We're good. 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 Yeah, okay. Thumbs up. So that one you can adjust, um, loft and light independent of one another, but uh, the bottom cog is attached to the shaft. So you actually end up rotating your shaft 
And right. So why, if you like, if well, if you like, say you like logo down, for instance. Right. So why is shaft. why is that important? Because when you adjust, when you have to spin the shaft, mm -hmm. uh, you have unless you installed the tip in the shaft, knowing what setting you were gonna do. Mm -hmm. Uh, then the shaft graphics might be off to the side. Yep. Uh, the shaft graphics might be up, up on top, which a lot of people would prefer the shaft graphics on the bottom. Yep. And then the other one, the big one, and if you're watching the video podcast, I'm showing you right now. Yeah. Grip, line. grip technology is mm -hmm. something that is very hot right now with this is an example of golf pride align. Yeah. Which has if, like a little rib on the back. If you have to adjust the shaft, if you have to rotate the shaft to get the setting you want, all of a sudden your align is now off to the side. Now that's not that big a deal for 10 bucks. You can get it re-gripped to the direction you want, but you still may have the shaft graphics sideways. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a deal breaker by any stretch, but it is an added perk of having the two cogs rotating independently of one another and independently of the shaft. So yeah. the Cali Opti puzzle is the only one that does that. Fun ah, fact. There you go. I like that. I, and um, I mean, without, you know, knowing much about uh, other manufacturer drivers, I'm actually just a little surprised right? Um, at that, right? You, you know, uh, whatever, maybe, maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Maybe I, I should be, I don't know, right. but it's the, nice. It's, it's nice to have them so that you don't have to rely on having to regrip right. or things like that, you know? Exactly. Um, and you know, like golfers, I mean, we've met a few golfers. Golfers can ten, can be particular about their clubs, about their grips. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, grip, uh, logo up, logo down, uh, all that stuff. Um, and actually, the, the, the first Callaway adjustable hosel that ever came out was back on RazorFit. Mm -hmm. And the RazorFit hosel was just a single cog. Single, yeah, I remember and that. And that was a single axis adjustment, but you could do it independent of the shaft. So mm -hmm. that was a nice, but it wasn't nearly as good as the, the next gen, mm -hmm. which launched with Big Bertha, Big Bertha. in 2014. 14. Um, and actually those shafts are, well. are still compatible with just drivers with today's drivers, not yes. fairway woods. Though. Yes. The yeah. fairway woods. So, uh, we can get into that. There are two, yeah. there are actually four versions of OptiFit hosels. Now there's the driver version, which we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of, yep. um, this is the newer version of that. And then there used to be an old version that had a little, little plastic cap on here. Mm -hmm. They're interchangeable. This one's a little lighter weight, but yeah. if you have the old one, no problem. Yeah. And then the new version, which is the fairway wood. So you so, yeah. can see it's, it's like more rounded too in shape and the, it's, it's a, just a little different. Is it, I'm sure they've, they've made it new because they want to make it lighter or just change it up a little bit like that. In right? the past, we'd been using the same driver hosel on the fairways and it has, it's bit with it being longer. It was really designed for a driver and it was had more weight. It was mm -hmm. longer, higher center of gravity. So this one, same adjustment technologies, but it was built specifically for a fairway wood. So mm -hmm. this launched with the flash fairway woods. So if you have a, a fairway wood flash, epic flash or newer, um, then this one will work and you, this one will fit, but I don't recommend doing it. Um, and actually, yeah. And then, uh, it, it, this shaft will not be compatible with older fairway wood heads. Right. So, so what Nate is trying to say, if you have a flash fairway wood, a new 2019 flash fairway wood that came with the, the stock shaft and the stock OptiFit hosel for that club, you cannot take that head and put it on a fairway wood shaft of the past for Callaway. So you yeah. can't, put it on the shaft of an epic fairway wood Correct. from two years ago because yep. the, the hosel has changed. So it's very specific to this year. Now, we just covered two versions. We covered yep. driver, we covered driver fairway. fairway the other two versions, do you know what they are? Uh, they are just lefty, right? The lefty version. Yeah, lefty we versions. get a ton of questions about yeah, this. Yeah, this is so a lefty version, this, this fairway wood shaft is actually a lefty one. Mm -hmm. Um, if you zoom in on this, or if you're oh, watching look at that the video, zoom. look at that. Look at Daniel oh, go. Let me, Trevor. Let me, look at you guys. Let me move this. Yeah. All right. So if you're, I'm sorry, if you're not watching the video right now and you're just listening okay. to us, uh, we sound like a bunch of mongos, but the letters, uh, I can promise you that we're trying the to letters and the numbers. If you can see here, yeah. have, have lines underneath them. So that's how you know it's a lefty. So they're underlined. Yeah. Yep. Every single one is underlined. That's how you know it's a lefty. So, um, we, the, from an adjustment standpoint, let's go into how it works. Yeah. 
And then I can talk about if you find yourself either a lefty yeah. with a righty shaft or a righty with lefty shaft, how to deal with that. But we'll okay, save that cool. for the end. All right, cool. All right, so let's go through the letters and the numbers, what everything means. We're going to say, for hypothetical reasons, we're going to do it only on a driver. Uh, because while the OptiFit hosels are different on the driver and fairway, they both allow the same exact capability in terms of the letters and numbers on the cog. So you have a 10.5 degree righty driver. It comes stock. If you buy it off the shelf, you'll see right below the 10.5, there's a little line, which is an indicator. And then you'll see N, S, and then another line. First of all, that means that it's lined up properly. If it's between those two little dashes, that means your OptiFit hosel, that's what it's supposed to read. And, and that also will ensure that your shaft graphics and your grip are the way you'd like it as well. Yeah. So everything has to be between those two dashes. That's how you know that it's, it's the, uh, the cogs are aligned in, in the proper positions. NS, N stands for neutral. Okay. Neutral meaning the lie. Right. Okay. That's very important. So lie angle has two options. That's it. N is neutral. Yep. D is draw. That's it. That's two it. settings. That's okay. It. Now S is probably what we get the most mm. questions on because what the hell is the S stand for? Right. It stands for stated loft. Stated. Stated law. Not intuitive. No, it's no, it's not. But that's why we have the podcast. That's on us, right? That's on us. <laughs> uh, but it's been like that for a while now. So what we mean by stated loft is if our head is a 10.5 driver head, then the stated loft, if it's on that cog setting, it's 10.5. It's not up a degree. It's not down a degree. It's not down two degrees. Not up two degrees. It's 10.5. Okay. So now. And you can see why that was done was because if your driver head is in a nine degree, yeah, you, we didn't want a separate hosel for a 10 degree and a separate hosel for a nine degree driver. Exactly. So S in that instance would mean nine degrees of loft. Right. So S is stated loft and S that's what your drive will, your driver will come with the settings unless you went and got fit and you guys decided that your cog should be in a different position and then your fitter ordered them like that and then they get delivered in already the settings that are, are good for your game. But let's say Nate that I slice the ball. Okay. Good launch, great launch characteristics, but that ball is just uh, for it just sails right on me mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Consistently right. Mm -hmm. I need to fix that ball flight or at least help mm -hmm. fix the ball flight. Yep. What's, a good recommendation. So the first thing uh, is going to be your lie angle. So we said lie angle has two options, neutral or draw. Mm -hmm. And then the loft has four options. Yep. Your stated loft, you can go down one, you can go up one or up two. Okay. So in this case, um, every combination of the cogs to get it to sit properly is going to be, it'll naturally fall to one will be a draw, uh, a lie angle setting and one will be a loft setting. Yeah. No matter what, you can't do two loft settings or two. <laughs> you can't settings. go, you can't go minus one and plus two right. on the cogs. It, it, will, it, it will not let it you, it won't do let that. you do that. So <laughs> in that case, the first thing is going to be lie angle. If yeah. you're slicing the ball, you want to be more upright yep. and it helps reduce the radius of the club and it helps you release the club better, get it through better. Mm -hmm. And it also slightly will shut the face Close a little, a little bit. bit because when the, when it, you go more upright, um, and you maintain your same hand position, the club will, um, it, it has no choice, but it will but to be, close a little bit. it'll be angled a little bit to the left. Yeah. I don't want to say close, but it will be a it, little, it just, if you take any golf club, you take right. a 60 degree wedge. <laughs> right. It's probably easy to see it. Yeah. If you put it on the ground with it, uh, with it sitting flush to the ground mm -hmm. and then you flatten it. So you, you pull the toe up. If you look at what the face is doing, it's going to, it's going to move to the left. Yeah. So. Um, and then, uh, in that case, so that'll be the first thing is putting in draw at that point, you can then choose whether you want to change the loft or keep the loft at stated. Yeah. If you're, if you're launching it, well, you like your ball flight in terms of how high you're hitting it, how you're spinning it, all of that, then 
you keep it so, on you keep it on stated law. I like to take the right side out of play for me. The yeah. right side is where I get in most trouble. Yeah. So I actually play my driver in the DS setting myself. Oh, okay, so you which do. is a little bit upright, but yep. stated loft. Right. And that's how I, that's how I choose to play my driver. But okay. if okay. your ball flight's a little too low or you don't have enough spin, you can go to uh, D and plus one or plus two. Uh, yeah. Um, how will how will a golfer Nate? How will is it just a matter of visually seeing it if Maybe a golfer doesn't have a launch monitor. They're literally at a driving range of any muni course. And, you know, they, they're they thinking about tinkering with, with the loft now. Let's, let's talk loft. Uh, what, are, what are some things that they'll see that will get them to maybe go in the either turn it down, turn it up? turn it up too. like how does a golfer know that that's like what they should do okay the big the the one uh if your ball flight it looks like a rainbow where mm -hmm. it goes up and down mm -hmm. um and the ball does not seem to be i'll call it soaring um then you probably don't have enough spin and that's when you'd want more loft mm -hmm. um to get the ball to flatten out and to have some carry to it or have some um like look like it's coasting right uh, if your ball is the opposite, where it's the reverse banana, where it's uh, bowing upwards. Right, almost like a balloon. Like a balloon. Ballooning, yeah. yeah. Like it looks like um uh like yeah, like like a ski you know, like a ski jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In that instance That's good, I haven't heard that. You probably have yet. too much spin. Yeah. And that's a camel's what, back. A camel's back. Right? Yeah, a camel's back. Work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um you have too, you're, you're spinning it too much. Too much, yeah. And you should reduce So if loft. you have that low flight that then, uh, like, 150 yards out starts climbing, yeah. that means you probably have too much spin. You're better off starting it, launching it higher with less spin. Mm -hmm. That's when you would want to lower the spin, yep. and that would be to the minus, um, the minus one setting. Right. Well, yeah. So the, I think the, the best thing with the OptiFit Hosel, in my opinion, is that, you know, we all know Nate – Ha gives his lessons on you know he does tinkering 101 he does tinkering 201 he does tinkering 301 the best part about the optifit one it's definitely tinkering 101 because you can literally experiment with each setting if you so choose to see which one gives you the f the desired flight and if you don't like it it literally takes less than 10 seconds to change it to a different yeah. setting very That's the beauty of easy it. to undo it when yeah. when you bend a club like on a loft line machine and you bend a club it's hard to get it back to the way you started yep um and also if you add glue to the head or something you're adding weight or changing length you can't undo that no um this is great because you can change it it doesn't affect swing weight it doesn't affect uh, overall weight it doesn't affect length it doesn't affect anything um other than the loft and lie, which is nice. Now, right. there's two things I want to uh, make sure we clarify. Okay. Oh, wait. Can I, can I yeah, please. Do, all right. Please. I'm going to go first. Okay. Please, please, please. I, I don't know if Nate's about to talk about this. He might He might about to be about to talk about this, but listen to this noise, you guys. Listen. Okay. Hold on. One sec. Ready? Oh. One sec. Hold on. Okay. Do you hear that? It just clicked three times. So many times we get questions of how do I know that the screw is in enough because I'm tightening up so much, but it's not clicking or anything. No, no, no. You're a click. You have You're to, a three click guy. You, I want it was to emphasize my point. <laughs> you want to make sure if you don't hear a click, a single click, all it takes is one click. If you don't hear that, that means it's not tight enough. And some golfers are hesitant to make it click because they feel like almost like they're going to break it. You're not going to break it. It needs to click at least one time for that is, it to be ready that to That is using a Callaway torque wrench. Yes. So that's, that's actually probably worth mentioning. A lot of the brands out there use the same size torques, uh, oh, yeah. same size screw. Yeah. But the torque wrenches might be torqued to different tensions. Yes. So we always recommend using a Callaway torque wrench on Callaway golf clubs. Yes, absolutely. So that's the point I want to yeah, make. What's the point a, you want to make? That's a great point. Okay, two things we want to clarify. Okay. Um, the, the second one will be adjusting if you have a lefty hosel or righty hosel in your oh, lefty. Oh, yeah. The yeah. first one, though, I want to say is we get a lot of questions that they will, they'll say, which is the loft hosel and which is the lie hosel? Uh, or yeah. uh, cog, sorry. Which yep. is the loft cog, which is the lie cog? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, I adjusted the top one 
to, let's say when it comes st stock, it's at NS, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll say, oh, the top one is the li the LICOG and the bottom one is the LOFCOG because mm -hmm. it's NS. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, well, I moved the, the top, uh, the top LICOG or I, I wanted to go to, um, uh, plus one neutral, right? So I adjust the loft cog to plus one, but I can't, it, it's not fitting to right. get right. This is critical. There is no loft cog or lie cog. They right. both do both. Yeah. So it's a little more difficult. It makes our job a little more difficult to explain how it works and why mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for a setting, like, uh, if you're looking for a setting like uh, D plus two and you can't, you can't figure out how come I can't get D plus two. Well, it's probably cause you should try plus two D yeah that. So D plus two doesn't exist, but plus two D does exist. Right. Just, just match them up until you find the, right. the combination you're looking for. It will line up. So they both we affect promise. loft. They right. both affect lie. Yeah. And depending on what setting you want, sometimes one might be the top, one might be the bottom. So right. that one's critical. Okay. What's number um, two? Cause we do get a lot of questions. Like I don't, I, I, I think my hosel is not working properly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. Number two is for left. If you're a righty and you have a lefty hosel or more, probably more commonly you're a lefty, yeah. but you get your hands on a righty shaft. Yeah. What do I do? And, and remember lefties, if you have a, if you, Get your hand on a righty shaft, and you're not sure if it's a righty shaft. Remember, righty shafts, the OptiFit hosel, no dashes on the numbers. If it's a lefty shaft, it will have dashes like on the numbers. Underlines. Un uh, under yeah, 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 right. Same, underlines yeah. on the numbers. Okay. So if you are a lefty and you found a r your hands on a righty shaft or vice versa, here's what you need to know. The lie angle setting will remain whatever it says on the setting. So D if whether it's, if you are a, a lefty using a righty shaft and your hosel is lined up with the D setting for draw, it will in fact be upright. Ah, okay. Okay. The loft setting will be whatever it says 180 degrees from what it says. So when you get the club and it says NS on it, if you're a lefty and you're using the righty shaft, it will be N from a lying angle standpoint neutral. But where it says S here, AJ, mm -hmm. you look 180 degrees and it says plus. Is that, was that plus one? It says plus one. So here, I can do it like that's this. That's interesting. So that's if a lefty uses a righty shaft. So here we have NS right yep. here. Yep. And if you're. You should watch the video podcast, by the way. If it's you're, very, very useful. If you're a lefty using this, it will, in fact, be N from a lie angle setting. Yep. But the loft setting will be 180 degrees which will be plus one interesting and then for example if you had it at we'll just pick a random yeah, one pick a random we'll one. do d plus two okay if this is what your setting says as a righty for a lefty it will in fact be draw which is yep. upright yep. but the loft will not be plus two it will actually be minus one. Oh wow so, so whatever, that's pretty drastic whatever it says opposite yeah, yeah so if you're a lefty and you pick up a righty chef that's that's crucial man i'm I'm sure there's been so many instances also, Nate, that a lefty has done that thinking they're going up two or up one and they're actually going minus one or uh, keeping it at the stated loft and all that. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, crucial. Wow. So if, Good point. if you want NS, let's try to find this real quick. Mm -hmm. If you want NS uh, as the, a lefty. What the setting is actually. As a lefty, if you want NS, mm -hmm. you'll actually set it up to N and plus one. Oh, and so that, the plus one is the stated. This, the plus one will be the opposite of the stated oh. for a lefty. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's so, that. Yeah. So make sure if you're a lefty, uh, best to, you know, best to have a lefty shaft, lefty cog on it. That this way, you know that, you know, when you're lining it up, it's actually what it says on there and not if you have a righty shaft where and you, know, you got to do a little same, research. Same holds true if you're a righty and you happen to get a lefty shaft. Right. Same deal. The lo yep. the lo the lie angle will be what it says. Yep. The loft will be what's 180 degrees oh, from it. Oh, man. That is tricky. That it is, is a little uh, tricky. But it makes sense if you think about it because obviously you're going about it uh, from the complete it, other end. If a two to three hours without blinking, you'll figure it out. Not just speaking from uh from uh, what a friend has told me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes experience a little bit 
Oh, for the friend. Oh, yes. Right, right, right. Very uh, I think we did. Uh, astute friend, yeah. you know. Um, okay. My, I guess, I don't know. I my last, like my parting words on this topic you know? would be, Do you have any, uh, I personally any believe when you're adjusting your driver and you have a driver like Epic Flash, which has a lot of yeah, ability to adjust, you know, sliding weights, um, or if you have movable weights, I personally like to adjust the hosel first before I mess with the weights in the head. I like the, because the weights in the head is affecting center of gravity, which I think has a little bit more yeah. ability to, um, it's almost like if you can, mm-hmm. uh, if you can change it with this, which if doesn't affect center of gravity, it, I feel like you're just a little better off, you know, like yeah. being able to have weight deep in the club face for more forgiveness before you're moving weight mm-hmm. forward and stuff. Anyway, that's my person. Yeah. So I like doing the OptiFit hosel first and then adjusting totally. sliding weights or movable weights. Fitter, That's a personal uh, fitters preference. Fitters would also yeah. p- agree with that. If you're someone who is hitting it to the right, if you're, if you're, if you're a righty and you're hitting it to the right, yeah. slicing it. Um, yeah, like, right. If you're, if you're someone who is hitting it to the right, if you're, if you're, if you're a righty and you're hitting it to the right, you're slicing it, um, and then you adjust your OptiFit hosel to the draw setting, and you're still hitting it to the right, you could always so that's, that's go to that perimeter weighting and move that perimeter weight so that it favors even more of a draw. So that's that's something to look out. But we're not going to talk about perimeter weighting because this is the OptiFit Hosel podcast. If you have any questions, remember, calwigolf.com slash community, fitting corner, ask your question there. Uh, Twitter is probably the most efficient way, I think, um, at AJ Vopel, at Nadelman CG, or... Honestly, at Callaway Golf, just literally go (laughs) and ask a question on Twitter at Callaway Golf, and it'll be directed to one of us. Chad Jones, who runs the social, will um, he either might have the answer or he'll come to one of us. Um, And then maybe even if you find yourself driving on a Monday or doing a little tinkering at home with a an old cassette tape radio player in your garage. Oh, an evening gardening, which actually. Uh, yeah, like funny, a nice cilantro. As it happens, that I actually do uh, gardening when I get home. Basil, a little herb garden. Yeah, oh. nice little herb garden. Uh, well, look at oh, you. I have everything: thyme, cilantro, <laughs> parsley, oregano, <laughs> basil. Um, I just put some shishito peppers in there. Yeah, yeah. I have a whole nice little herb garden. Anyway, uh, Sirius XM PJ Tour Radio Mondays, eight o'clock Eastern, Bang. five o'clock Pacific. Ask your questions. I'm excited to be reunited. We've been a few weeks uh, apart. 866-469-0026. Boom. That's the number to call us on Monday nights with your fitting questions. I, dude, I know. For real. I know. I've had uh, Garrett Pon as my co-host the last two weeks. He's been crushing it. But, yeah, listen to that show, that live show, every single Monday night if you haven't. And, um, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for listening as always. Nate, thanks for the knowledge. And we will see you next time on The Fitting Room Podcast. Oh, 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 oh,